So we're still here in October, and once again we're left with that question. What is scary and what isn't? And what makes a good Halloween show? And what doesn't? And welcome back to the heart of the stories we tell. I'm Rob the Host, and this is another look deep into what makes a story a story. A theory on storytelling by a storyteller who believes that every story has merit. And tonight's episode is... Why we use horror movies, monsters, to tell other types of stories. And happy Halloween, everyone. Especially for those of you that are looking for a good spooky thing to look out for the holiday. What we're really looking at here, though, could be any story. Why do we use comic book story characters to tell non-comic book stories? Why do we use romance characters to tell adventure stories? But being that it's October, I think we should mostly just focus on why we have horror creatures used for other stories. And I think it's important to reference that I'm not talking about having a subplot because any horror movie could have a romance subplot. Any horror movie could ha be considered action-adventure, or any variant thereof. No, I'm talking very specifically using a non-horror setting. But for those of you that don't know what I do here, what I do is I examine stories, how and why we tell them, and then I do reviews like this, and I do theory videos like this. If that sounds interesting to you, click subscribe and join our little family. Now... People say that horror has changed between then and now, and yeah, it has, but only in the same ways that all stories are different, depending on when you tell them. And realistically, Teen Wolf wasn't really a horror story, even though it was using werewolves, which is a horror theme, a horror character, but that was just as true when Michael J. Fox was playing the character, and it was a bit of a teen comedy, really. Action comedy? And the psychology of it is pretty simple. We know the basic rules of some of these creatures. We know the mythology behind a werewolf, a zombie, a vampire. And yeah, we can make little tweaks here or there, but at the end of the day, if I tell you Frankenstein's monster, you know what I'm talking about, at least in general. And with that, we have a shared environment. And that shared environment becomes something that we can access, something that we can work with. And then we use that in order to tell a story. One that maybe feels a little horror-ish, even though it's really not. One where we talk about scares, even though the movie itself isn't too scary. You can take one look at this monster... And even though he doesn't have a defined origin, have a pretty good idea of what you're looking at. And let's be honest, other things, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Frankenstein, get used a lot in different adaptations. So at the end of the day, we see a lot of these in what I would like to think of as a modern mythology. And that actually got me thinking about what is mythology, and what's the difference between a myth and a legend and what we do in storytelling, and when we borrow from mythology for a story, exactly what that means. And as such, I went turn to my old friend at TV Tropes, and realized that to a certain extent, we're just talking about being a genre outside of its own genre. And like one of my first examples, Teen Wolf is a teen drama. It's a coming-of-age story. It has very little to do with horror, but it uses the werewolf. And that shorthand tells you so much. Way back when I first got started doing this, I was talking about the women of urban fantasy. And as such, witches got talked about a lot. Because let's be honest, that's where a lot of this comes from. But in that, I also talked about True Blood. And at the end of the day, True Blood was an adult-themed romance. Yes, it had a bunch of sexuality and a bit of violence. And the gore was a little over the top at times. But at the end of the day, the story of True Blood is the story of Sookie Stackhouse. In fact, that's what the books that it's based on is, the Sookie Stackhouse series. And that is all based on her love and wanting to find love. So it's a romance story using fairies and vampires and werewolves. And long before that, Bewitched took the idea of the witch and made it into a comedy. 
Why? Because the idea of magic just was the backdrop of a story being told that could have been any story. I mean, it's everyone loves Raymond with magic. And see, that's the thing. A witch is horrifying and terrible when she's in the ring, but is kind of fun and lovable when she's on Bewitched, and is kind of weird but quirky when she's on Charmed, which is all just a long way to answer my question. Why do we use horror characters to tell other stories? Because at the end of the day, they have become one of our modern mythologies. And I think that next week, we're going to touch more on what the word mythology means as we dive a little deeper. Before I do, what do you think? Do you think that it gives us new subgenres when we use these horror creatures in other lights? Do you like when we do, or do you think they should remain in the horror genre? And most importantly, you do know what I'm going to use as my other mythology, right? Let me know in the comments. And if you liked this video, like and share it, and of course, click that subscribe button to join our little community here. I'd like to give a big shout out to my first Patreon, who's helping this channel get a little better, and hopefully very shortly, we'll be getting some new video equipment and audio equipment. So thank you. In the meantime, even if you can't help out with money, help out with a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts and ideas so that we can try to explore and get a little deeper. And next week, well, in two weeks, we will talk about what makes a mythology. Have a good night, and thanks for watching.